probably gonna sound like Bill Burr right now, but it just honestly needs to be said. Honestly, the problem with the left is that they can't do the most simple picketing without arguing. You want to put a poster up? You stupid whore! Do you not think that's insensitive to blind people? What about people with traumatic experiences with posters? Yes, I am speaking primarily about the recent discourse that's been spread around using the Say Her Name hashtag to spread awareness to Brianna Gay's murder. The specific phrase of Say Her Name was chosen because even after her death, the media would refuse to address Brianna Gay by her name and would instead either refer to her by her dead name or not refer to her at all and just use vague allusions. A lot of the time, they don't even mention that she's trans because then their other articles chastising trans people might seem like a conflict of interest. So to save face, they try to memorialize as little about her identity as they possibly can. Now in response to this, there's been a few keyboard cons that have said that the use of this phrase is offensive because it was allegedly started to memorialize black victims of police violence. Now I say allegedly because it's inherently impossible to prove who started the use of such an ambiguous phrase. You cannot ascribe such a broad general statement like say her name to such a specific use case to the point of actually unironically comparing those that use it in other contexts to imperialistic colonizers once again stealing from black people. But for the sake of argument, let's just state that we can absolutely determine that this phrase was originally used to memorialize black people getting murdered by police. Which, to be fair, it is undeniable to say that it has been used for people like, like I said, Breonna Taylor, and even men like George Floyd and Dante Wright. Having that said, the first reason why I believe that it's ridiculous to say that it's racist to use the phrase in reference to people like Breonna Gay is that trans rights and black civil rights are not in conflict with one another. Civil rights for people who are black, trans, queer, disabled, etc. are all components of the same movement. These are all people that suffer for separate but... Uh, bad phrasing. These are all people that all equally suffer, but for different nuanced reasons. There is no conflict of interest to use the phrase to describe those that are also oppressed. And to reiterate, the reason why Say Her Name was chosen specifically was because Brianna was being deadnamed in articles and the media. This human being was not being referred to by her name, but either by a name she no longer identifies with, or vague allusions and euphemisms like trans teenager. And the reason why Say Her Name was used for black victims of police violence is because the media wasn't using their name and stories. These specific human beings that should be still alive and with their families and friends were not being referred to by their names, but by vague allusions like black teenager. It is appropriate to use the phrase say her name because it draws parallels to these cases. We're gonna change gears here and read this great take from someone that's absolutely been cucked by white guilt. Please use hashtag dignity for Brianna instead of using hashtag say her name to mourn Brianna Gay. That hashtag is for black folks killed by police violence, for that community to mourn and fight. We white folks shouldn't steal it, especially as all of us, not just white folks, are mourning. That is such a dramatic way to put it. Steal it. I wasn't exaggerating when I said these people unironically compare you to, like, colonizers and shit for using a hashtag that they don't deem appropriate. I don't know if the original poster, who is white by the way, forgot this, but white people are capable of doing things without the ultimate goal being genocide. First, after listening black folks, the issue is how quickly white people cooped in the use of this hashtag. Second, how white folks got angry when this was pointed out and would rather argue than listen, wrong form of then, which feeds to drain us both of energy and ability to mourn. The would rather argue than listen statement is absolutely fallacious. It essentially makes the assertion that anyone disagrees with someone's personal beliefs is in fact not listening or understanding their points. That's just circular logic and it's pretentious circular logic at that is that the only way anybody could ever disagree with me is because they are not intelligent enough to understand my points. What other explanation could there possibly be? We are not fighting for Brianna's name to even be heard. She made news. 
The hashtag is for black women who are ignored by mainstream. Brianna is being discussed. We are fighting for her dignity in her death, her ability to be seen as herself, and for this to not happen again. Ironically, you are proving that you are not understanding the other side of the argument because she wasn't being seen as herself. She was being dead named or just not being given a name at all. It is for that reason that people were using that specific terminology of say her name. I'm gonna skip ahead a bit in this thread. It's still stupid, but I'll get back to it later. All this nonsense prevents us from mourning Brianna and actually fighting for pertinent issues. Yeah, pertinent issues, like who is allowed to use a hashtag? Well, alright sweetheart, I'm gonna let you fight that big fight that's really important and pertinent, and I'm gonna keep talking about stupid, dumb, irrelevant shit like Republicans removing all the books from classrooms. My next point is that having such a stance that only certain people are allowed to use a hashtag for specific reasons is outright anti-progressivism. Policing the minute specificity of terminology with respect to certain things, it's oxymoronic. In enforcing this trivial argument of defending what is essentially the intellectual property of three words, is complexifying and interfering with progressivism. They are persecuting those that are using a phrase in a different context than you're used to, especially if it is interfering with the movement to do good. In other words, you're not really being progressive here, you just are convinced that you're progressive. People on the right will say and do whatever the fuck they can to take power, meanwhile people on the left can't even decide if they should vote for people on the left. It's fucking pathetic. Moreover, this practice of just turning people against their fellow man that suffer alongside them is one of the fundamental pillars of destructive propaganda, and is very simply just so disappointing how easily susceptible people are to this. If you sincerely believe that you are being racist by saying say her name in reference to Brianna Gay, you are being tricked by people that are not actually concerned with leftist issues and are going to end up destroying them from within. While we're on the subject, let's take a look at the person that started this discourse to begin with. Tamisha here is the person responsible for largely publicizing that perspective that using the say her name hashtag to refer to Brianna Gay's murder is literally colonialism. Shockingly, this person also happens to be incredibly fucking racist. Unambiguously black people. You're not black just because you have a black parent. Mixed people. I'm literally shaking right now. Now what she's saying here is basically that mixed race people straight up just aren't black in any sense. And that mixed race people are, I guess, inferior to unambiguously black people as she labels them. They just aren't truly black. Which is so fucking ridiculous. I haven't mentioned it yet because it's never come up until now in any of my videos, but this sort of attitude towards mixed race people just- I just can't help but feel bad for them. They are suffering this sort of specific racism against them that isn't really talked about very often, where they're torn between two different cultures and are excluded from both of them at the same time, when there is no reason for them to be at odds to begin with. And the fact is, it's just people that think there's some sort of inherent superiority to their own race or culture that others can't be a part of, even though the definition of someone's race and culture is already incredibly nebulous and convoluted to begin with. Hey Tamisha, this might be a concept you've heard of. It's called racism, and people don't like it. People arguing over the precise definition of white passing as if we shouldn't just stop centering mixed people and instead just center black people most affected by colorism, featureism, texturism. Texturism. I... This person isn't a troll or like a psyop or anything. Texturism. 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 That's what they said. They said texturism. Now, if you're unfamiliar, the term white passing is a term invented by TikTok meant to exclude other people because they allege that they are close enough to appearing to be white that they no longer suffer prejudice. Or at the very least, not to the degree that, quote, unambiguously black people do. Number one, nobody is centering mixed people over black people. That's just a lie. Number two, mixed race people do suffer from colorism, as you call it, because ironically, this is an example of it. Excluding them from your own culture and saying that they shouldn't be part of certain social movements because of the color of their skin, you deem to be part of a race that's 
not up to your snuff, I guess. And my number three reason as to why this logic is flawed is because if we were to elaborate on it, I'd be willing to bet that there's other black people that suffer even more prejudice and racism than you do. If you want to continue excluding others saying that, oh, they don't suffer a sufficient amount of racism to count as being part of your culture, I'd be willing to bet that there's people that suffer it even more, therefore you should be not part of that culture. Oh, you're saying that you are suffering some sort of prejudice? Well, I'm sorry. I, last I checked, you don't live in Harrison, Arkansas. So I guess cry about it? It's such a bad path to go down and I really do not understand it. You are complaining about other centering mixed race people over you, when in fact, you're the one that's trying to center yourself over mixed race people. And either way, that's not gonna fly. Not mixed race people dropping face selfies to promote themselves on MLK Day. Loving v. Virginia was a mistake. Loving v. Virginia was the Supreme Court case that said it was unconstitutional for states to have laws banning interracial marriage. And I'd have given her the benefit of the doubt that she's joking about this if there weren't several tweets about her utter contempt for mixed race people. Best case scenario, she's trying to use sarcasm as a veil to her real opinions, but even then, the sarcasm isn't much of a veil if it's just unironically your opinion. To summarize, this behavior of exclusivity is just racist, no other way to put it. But my points are that this movement is one that was propped up by a racist, it is counterintuitive to social justice, and at its core makes the assertion that black civil rights activism has to be completely unilaterally separate from trans rights, even though at the end of the day it's all the same struggle that everyone's facing. And finally, because it needs to be said, do you not find all this incredibly insensitive to try and dictate how people should be mourning a dead trans child? It's so stupid to try and claim ownership over such a broad phrase and then emphasize division and exclusivity with it at the expense of people mourning. Like, holy shit, can you stop fucking caring about just yourself? And I want to emphasize that this sort of thought policing is just going to make leftist ideologies less appealing and less accessible for people. And it encourages this tribalistic viciousness between them that will like I said, destroy it from the inside out. Not to sound dramatic, but stuff like who can say say my name is exactly the sort of trivial shit that the right accuses the left of being concerned about. I side myself with the left because their concerns on average are about real things. Abortion, queer rights, personal liberty, etc. In comparison to the right being concerned about the Muppets having a disclaimer before it saying that, you know, this was made at a different time, Beware. Ah! But honestly, this is just something that sincerely should not be cared about, as it is just complexifying issues and wasting time with them. To anyone in the left listening, here's my advice. Grow the fuck up and start caring about real shit instead of this idiotic culture war, who can do what, who can say what. It's so stupid. We gotta start caring about real issues or we're gonna lose the progress made in the process. The longer we distract ourselves with these fake trivial issues, the more progress that gets undone and reset culturally. We lost the guarantee to abortion. Gay marriage is possibly next on the chopping block. There's more concerning shit than fucking a hashtag. And in, people need to start realizing it or start getting comfortable with not having these freedoms. That's all I got for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching.